Today, the message will be on the resurrection of the dead. How many resurrection do we have? <clears throat> you know, it is so sad what I see in this time of the year on television and what takes place. You see people whipping themselves to the blood. You see people carrying crosses around. You see people doing all kinds of work. What an insult that is to God. It's like you inviting me to your place because all those things that they're doing, whipping themselves, putting themselves on the cross, is because they don't believe in what he's done. It's like if you were, if you were to invite me to your place for dinner and I did not think that you were a very good cook at all and I would bring my own lunch with me because I don't think you can boil water. What an insult that would be to you. Well, this is what people are doing. They whip themselves to the blood because they don't believe what Christ has provided for us. In Isaiah 53 and verse 5, the Bible says, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his stripe, I am healed. You don't have to whip yourself to blood because by his stripe, we are healed. By the blood, I am forgiven. But people don't believe that. <clears throat> I am going to speak about the resurrection from the dead. But I want to let you know something here this morning. People do all this, all this Easter thing, and here in our church we don't do Easter, but we do the Passover, the Passover lamb, what he has done for us. But I want to point out to you that what even they do, they don't believe it. They don't believe it. Because I will be showing you today the resurrection that Christ, the resurrection of the dead, and how he has resurrected, and because of that, he's my Passover. He passed from the flesh into the spirit, and this is what we're going to have, part of it, which is the Passover lamb. He suffered. But people today, listen carefully, people today don't believe what Christ has done for us. To begin with, if I'm going to be talking about the resurrection, is the resurrection from what? What is the resurrection from the dead? But I got something to tell you today. The whole world don't believe that when you die, you're dead. They believe when you die, you are resurrected automatically to heaven. So if you're resurrected at the time of death, what would be the meaning of the resurrection of the, of the dead? If we're all resurrected already, in heaven or in hell, and meanwhile I got more place being an ex-Catholic, purgatory, limbo, I mean pick your, where you want to go. What I want to say to you, people don't know what they believe. And before I talk about the resurrection, well, we need to know if where the dead are. And then I'm going to get to that. But in, in, what I'm going to be talking about, which I will not finish today, but I will show you what will take place at the first resurrection. I'm going to show you what's going to take place at the second resurrection with all kinds of verse. Most likely I'm going to try, but I will not be able to do it today. But I'll do what I can. And then I'm going to be talking about the third resurrection from the dead with verses. But I want to tell you before I start about resurrection 
those are three resurrections that has not taken place yet, but will take place. All over the world, people claim to be Christian, but they don't believe the Word of God. Let's forget our idea and let's go to the Word for our answer. Because the answer is in the Word of God. But I want to talk to you about some have resurrected already. Jesus resurrected at least three people from the dead. Peter resurrected two or three people from the dead and there's more than that. But he, when he says let the dead raise the dead, he's very few people were raised from the dead. But we have dead people in our life, people that are blind, and that's why we have to go and raise the dead because they are dead spiritually. And they're blind spiritually. Now, people don't know what they believe. So, if at the time of death, you go into heaven, or hell, or wherever, when Jesus Christ rose Lazarus from the dead, why didn't he go to heaven to raise him up? Instead, he went to the grave, because that's where Lazarus was. We need, you know what? I made up in my mind in my life, I'm going to believe this, or forget the whole thing. If I didn't believe this, I would probably be your worst enemy. Because when I was little, we used to chew nails for breakfast. It's a pretty rough guy. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, but the Lord changed me. Now, I want you to keep in mind, I said something very important here. You need to prove to yourself that what you believe is it true or have you been deceived and you don't know it? <clears throat> Praise the Lord forevermore. So, three resurrections from the dead. Three resurrections and dead from the dead. So if you're dead when you're dead, then you're not somewhere else. You're dead. So I'm going to just show you a few verses. I'm not going to stay very long on them, but I want you to write them down or do what you want, and it will be on the internet anyway. In Psalms chapter 15, verse 17, the dead praise not the Lord. Why? Why not? If you're playing the, the fiddle up there, why aren't you? Well, here is what he says. The dead praise not the Lord. Neither does anyone that goes into the grave. They don't praise the Lord. Why? Because they're dead. That's why they, they don't praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 5. The living know that they will die. But the dead don't know nothing. Neither does anyone that goes into silence. Did you hear that? So are we going to believe what people say? And yet they have the nerve. To say they believe in the resurrection. Okay. But when the person, Michael Jackson, when he died, people don't know where he is. Oh, well, he's gone to a better place. Well, yeah, he's in the ground. Rotting like and living, looking like he did when he was alive. You know? I'll tell you something. My dad died. And my mom too. And they're in St. Lord, Manitoba, Canada. And I guarantee you that if you go dig the grave, they're there. When the coffin is in the middle of the floor, the man standing behind the pulpit telling the people he's gone to heaven. Well, open the coffin and you'll see he's there. Well, yeah, well, his body is there, but he's gone somewhere. Well, you'll find out where he's gone. The Bible says all that. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, Let's see, uh, let's see where our friend David is at, our patriarch, the man that loved God. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. The man that his heart was after God. Where is he? 
In heaven? In hell? Where is he? The man that took Uriah the Hittite's wife. And he, she was in, he was in form of that woman. And she had a child, and the child died. And he killed Uriah the Hittite. He killed her husband to have, to have his wife. Where is he? Is he burning? Where is, he, where is Cain that killed Abel? Where is he? Is he burning like people have them? Or where is he? Okay. Acts chapter 2 verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak to you of our patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. Listen. Not dead and gone to heaven. Dead and buried. And his sepulcher is with us until this day. And just look over a little further to verse 34. For David is not gone to heaven. You see? You see me, I was lying all my life. And when I came to the Lord, I decided, you know what? I believe in God. I believe in what he did for me. And I chose to believe him. And forget what man says. For David is not gone to heaven, but so what, what do you say? The Lord said unto my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make that your, my, your footstool, the earth your footstool. Now, and I need, before I talk about the resurrection, I need to bring up this thing here. So then you will see freely what I'm saying after. So some people by now are already thinking that our list is going to be listening on the internet. Well, what about Enoch? What about Elijah that, what, that took him? What about people that, that went into a, the, the, a chariot of fire? Where did he go? Nowhere. The Bible says that he go nowhere. Where do I find that? Well, in Hebrews chapter 11. The father of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith. Abel, by faith Enoch, by faith Abraham, by faith Elijah, by faith Jacob, all of them. And then in verse, um, let's see here, uh, Hebrew 11, okay, um, verse 13, it says, and all these died in the faith, not having received the promise. So Enoch is one of them. That left in the chariot of fire. And his body could not be found. Here he says that he died not having gone to heaven. Has not received the promise. People want to, you know, they don't know what they believe in. They want to push under the carpet. But me, I open the carpet and I put their nose in it. I'm like that. I'm like that. My dad was mad all the time. I'm not as bad as that. Oh, praise the Lord. <clears throat> so, this is, okay. Now, Lazarus was St. John chapter 11, verse 14. Okay? <clears throat> so, when are you going to be made alive? Now, another thing I want to talk before I go to the resurrection is we were taught that our soul, we have a soul inside of us that's eternal. And that's going to be living in heaven or in hell. That's a lie. Another lie. Okay? Today, I want to show you that you do not get eternal, you never become immortality. You do not, you're not immortal until Christ comes back. This is when you're going to receive immortality. Not now? Wow. See why people have so much problem with me? So, when you die, if you're going to heaven forever, or you're going to hell forever, you have received immortal. You're, then you are immortal. But that's not true. The Bible tells us when you become 
be mortal. And another thing I'm going to tell you, and I'm telling the audience that's going to be watching this in the future, the, the people, the wicked, will never have eternal life. Either in hell or wherever they think they're going to be. There's no promise, nowhere in the Bible, that the wicked receive eternal life. If it's in hell, it still would be in eternal life. The Bible doesn't say that. But we're told that our soul inside of us never dies. Lives forever. A soul cannot die. Well, let's see what the Bible says. The Bible says, the soul that sin, it shall die. Oh, I thought it didn't die. The Bible says it does. <clears throat> now, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 18, chapter 4. 18 chapter 4. Behold, all souls are mine. Okay? So, and some to try and find in the truth. Well, that's Old Testament. Don't you believe in the whole Bible? And another thing the Bible says that the, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 7, that uh, the law does not, think not that I've come to destroy the law. I've not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. They will not, think not that that I came to destroy the law because there won't be one drop or one tittle that will be taken away from the law. So, okay. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so is also the soul of the Son. The soul that sin, it shall die. You see that? And James chapter 5, verse 20 also says that if you win a person talk to a person and he turns from the, his wicked ways, you have saved a soul from dying. So then a soul dies. And it will die in the lake of fire. But that's the second death. That's not a, an immortal soul. If you're wicked, you do, there's nowhere in the whole Bible that if you are wicked, that you receive immortality. Immortality is just for the bride of Christ. It's just for the saints. The saints will live forever. That's what immortal is. And I'll, I'll give you the verse. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, here we go to 1 Corinthians. And now what I said, I'm going to prove it to you. I like doing that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay. Verse 42. Now this is the resurrection chapter in the Bible. Okay? I'll just, I can't read the whole thing. I don't have time. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. Listen, listen, listen. The resurrection of the dead for the righteous. Okay? This is where you're going to find that there's not just one resurrection. The first resurrection is only, only for the righteous. Not for the wicked. First resurrection. Okay. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. When the, uh, the person that died, that's a Christian, it was sown in the ground. And it corrupted. But when it comes out, it will be incorruption. Incorruption means it's not going to rot. It's incorruption. Okay? 43. It is sown in dishonor. Well, it stinks. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. The body. What's more weak than the flesh body? I used to think I, I was Superman. I was strong. But don't take long. You don't have the strength that you used to have. You know, it, it's, so and when you die by that time, I mean some people, they, they're born blind, they're born no hair on their head, they're born with no teeth in their mouth, and that's how they die. Some of them have to have a diaper on them just like, uh, I mean, this is awful. Do, do they go and do it? Do, do, are, they, are they put in the ground in weakness? Well, of course. And we know it's true because we know it's happened to people that we know. Okay. <clears throat> it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It will be risen in power. But no, 
it's only the, the children of God here we're talking about. Listen, and some of you want to know how many bodies you have. Well, you have two. I was just listening to a man yesterday, and I was telling him that when I, I became born again, I had told the, the, the shrink that I had been born twice. And boy, I tell you, he was thought I was a nut. He wanted to put a sleep jacket on me. You didn't see that. Okay. It is sown, listen, look. It is sown a natural body. That's what, right? It is risen a spiritual one. So that's two. Okay? So in me, there's in the new man. When I became born again, there's a new man inside of me. This one's going to the ground. Some people believe it's going to, going to heaven, but this one's going to the ground. The new one is the spiritual one. This one will live forever and look just like me. You'll have a French accent. I think. <clears throat> so it, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. That makes it two bodies. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, just go down on the same page to fi from 51 to 55. Okay? Here is the proof I want to show you that you're not immortal. Even the Christian today are not immortal. Did you hear me? The Christian today have not received immortality. They're not immortal. But once Christ sounds the trumpet and the dead in Christ will rise first, then you will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and you will have that you will become an immortality person. Okay? Here it is. 51. Are you ready to receive a mystery? That's what he says now. Right now in 51. <clears throat> Behold, he says, I'll show you a mystery. Are you listening and are you ready to get the mystery? I'm going to show you a mystery. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed. Listen. The ungodly and the wicked are not there. Okay? The ungodly and the wicked is not talking about them. <clears throat> talking about the bride. The bride. I want to show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We will be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the what? The dead. The trumpet shall sound, and the dead. Wait a minute. They're not in heaven. They're not in hell. They're not in limbo. They're not in purgatory. They're in the ground. The dead. Are the dead dead or are they not dead? If you're, not, if you're gone, you're not dead. That's why the Bible says, in John, if any man doesn't believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, they don't believe that Christ is well, he died. But he went to heaven, he didn't go nowhere else. Because he told the thief on the cross, today you'll be with me in paradise. Well, how can he be in paradise? So he's gone to heaven. How did he misunderstand the Bible? The Bible said that Jesus Christ was dead for three days and three nights. So what did he say to the thief on the cross then? He didn't say that. That's not what he said. Today, I will see you in St. Louis. Today, I'm telling you, I will see you there. Today, you will be with. Today, I'm telling you that you will be with me in paradise. Because the thief said, forgive me. And the other one was swearing at him. And he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He says, okay. Like that man repented. Today he's just telling me that you'll be within paradise. Paradise is a, pl a place of reward when he comes back. You will be there. You will be with me in paradise. But he didn't go to paradise that day because he, he, he went to the, to the prison to preach to the, to the one that won't captain any. And that's why when he resurrected, he asked the Mary, he said, don't touch me. She wanted to touch him when I, she went to the supper after the resurrection. She wanted to touch him. He said, don't touch me. 
have not yet ascended to my father. Therefore, he didn't go to heaven. You see? Okay. I'm back on track now. I'm getting there. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound, and the dead shall rise in corruption, incorruptible. When these are going to rise, watch this here. They are going to be incorruptible. That's when you're going to receive that body. You see? When you're going to be raised from the dead, you will rise in corruption. Incorruptible, that means your body is not the same and you will be able to fly in no time anywhere because you do not have the same body. You will raise incorruptible. Watch. And, and we shall be changed. You will be changed. The body that you got now, it's not going to be the body that's going to be in that same chapter says that. I don't have time to get there, but watch. For this corruptible, corruptible, liable to die, rot, good for nothing, must, not maybe, must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. Listen. This mortal must put on immortality. So then I don't have eternal life. When here you don't have eternal life. How can you have eternal life when only you will risen, you're going to be raised from the dead, will you receive eternal life? Then you will be immortal. Then you will have received immortality. Wow, it's quiet in here. It's like you never heard anything like that. So who are we talking about? We're talking about the bride, the church, the bride of Christ. Your corruptible must put on in corruption. That's why in a moment, the ones that are alive and remain in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, you will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last, the furthest from out, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain. It's all talking about the bride of Christ. It's all talking about the first resurrection, which I'll get back to it. But what is the key point here? Is you do not receive immortality. So then the soul is not immortal unless you're, you're a child of God. That's when you will put on immortality. And then, well, grieve, where is your victory? Because Jesus rose. Death, where is your sting? Death and the grave will be swallowed in the victory that Christ has provided for me. So, the excitement is here that you do not receive immortality. So, my question to you, are you, which resurrection are you going to be in? Are you going to be in the one that they'll be raised and be cast into the lake of fire? Are you going to be in the one that is brought up to earth to be taught? To be taught? Oh, I got some good stuff to tell you. Or are you going to be the one blesses he? Revelation chapter 20, and I know you can only wait to get there. Verse 4, 5, and 6. I know you're just shaking to get there, but listen to what I have to tell you today and forget that. I'll get there. Are you going to be in the resurrection? Blesses he that has part in the first resurrection. It's your choice which one you want to be in. Praise the Lord for the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. So only the righteous and the resurrection of the dead will they have obtained. Listen to me. I've been your pastor for six years, but I want to tell you something that might make you change your mind about yourself. I hope to obtain unto the resurrection of the dead. Who said that? Apostle Paul. I want to obtain. I'm working to obtain unto the resurrection of the dead. 
business is what how excited, how serious you are. Nothing here pretending. I, I, I've seen coming to some houses in the past, and the minute I come to some house, some people saw me by the window, they ran and they sat down and prayed to the Bible. Get lost already. The one that I'm talking about is the one that prays in secret. God will reward him openly. The one that his prayer life is in the closet. The one that knows how to seek the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one that is worthy to be worshipped on earth. For he was dead and now he's alive. Praise the Lord. Oh. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, here we go now. Now I've talked about one thing and two things. Now I'm on the third thing. A little bit. I'm going to talk about it and then I'm starting with the resurrection. I haven't started yet. Give me a chance. I didn't start to preach yet. I will. Another one that will shock the daylights out of you. Okay? Should you want to hear it? There is no judgment. There is. Oh, wait a minute. Back up a little bit. Try again. There is two, at least two judgments that's coming upon the face of the earth. But the bride of Christ will not be standing at the white throne judgment to be judged. Write that down, put that in your pipe, and smoke it. The bride of Christ will not be judged. The bride of Christ is being judged right now here on earth. God's going to deal with you. You will suffer great persecution, but he will have washed you in the blood of the Lamb. And there was no guile found in your mouth. And you will stand before God without fault because you are called faithful, chosen, and faithful. Hallelujah. I feel God here. And after that, he, he says that you are faithful and all that, he's going to judge you. Because I'll show you verse that the Bible says for the bride of Christ, any sin that you are forgiven, as far as the east is for the west, from the west, he forgives you. All sins, he's never to remember. And he'll bring you up the judgment day and put it back on your nose? I think not. Oh boy, I'm getting to be better preacher. You see? Now I want to give you the verse about the judgment of the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is judged right here on earth. I'll tell you something. We have been dead. Another thing I want you to look as you study. Why do we have courts in the land? It's to pass judgment on the wicked. I'm going to keep playing with court. What, what did you do wrong? Well, I don't know, but I'll try and think of something. Judgment is always for the wicked. That's for people of God. And there will, there's a few verse. There's a one or two verse that says, and at the great right throne judgment, you will judge the quick and the dead, the living and the dead. But stay with me here. Stay with me here. Praise the Lord. First Peter, the first pope that was ever on earth, so I was told by man, the first pope, his name was Peter. It's funny Peter didn't know that. Peter didn't know anything about that. He says, you know who I am? He says, I'm an elder. But since then, he died and people made him a pope. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, you know what? I can't help myself. <clears throat> the scriptures, what's happening to you is the scriptures are being opened to you. This is a miracle. This is the reason he died. That when I show you a verse, man, if it doesn't mean that, you tell me what it means and you contradict me. I, I want you to do that. I want you to prove God says in Malachi chapter 3, prove God. Be I'm saying, prove me. Come and show me that what I'm saying is not true. And it's not in the Bible. Okay? 
People talk, but don't keep, keep away from me. I guess it's because they know I come from St. Lob. Okay, with Joseph here. Praise the Lord forevermore. <clears throat> now, I said to you that judgment is here. Here we go. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. You there? For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. The judgment must be begin at the house of God. And who does it start with? Whoever. Oh, here, this guy. Because he sits right here. Judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it starts with us, what will be the excuse for them that don't make it? I don't boss you. I don't tell you what you do and not to do. When you come and ask me a question, get ready to hear the answer. And if you're ugly, and I think you're ugly, I'll tell you you're ugly. Otherwise, don't ask me. And that's why it's all of you have come to ask me. I don't, I don't use that kind of language, but I'll say like Donald Trump would say, you are very unattractive because I I'm educating myself. But if you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you what I see and what I think. And, and the rest is up to you. God told me to go and feed God's sheep. He did not say go and make them chew, open them up and put some hay and then and make them chew. He didn't say that. He says go and feed them. And my job is to feed the pigs at home, okay? I didn't have a hard time putting the meat, okay? They eat anything, those things. Oh, what a job. Now, okay. For this has come that the judgment must begin at the house of God. You know what? God has been well out of with us. He's dealing with us. And if you're a son, he will chastise you. And the, the bride has made himself ready. He has washed the bride in the blood of the Lamb. They are called faithful, chosen faithful. Hallelujah. And they will rule and reign with Christ for 1,000 years. Because the judgment, this is a mistake that people think. They think that when Christ comes back, is the great day of judgment. Keep in mind that's not true. That is not true. Because it's not until the end that separate the wheat from the gold. And I'll show you the first resurrection, the second resurrection, and the third resurrection, and everything that will ever happen. Okay? So don't come and ask me questions here that I didn't answer, I didn't talk about here. But once I'm finished, you can Gang up if you want. If, if you have anything to talk about, praise the Lord forevermore. Now, the, as far as your sins are for, are forgiven, the righteous, the sins are forgiven as far as the niece is from the west. Here's the word. Psalms 103, verse 11 and 12. Okay? Hebrew chapter 8, listen. God said, your sin, and I'll show you the verse of later time, will I remember no more. So imagine, he uses you to be in the bride of Christ, to rule and reign with him, not in heaven, here on earth, for a thousand years, and then he takes you out of the bride and puts you with everybody else to judge you. That doesn't make sense, does it? Okay, Hebrew chapter 8, verse 11, verse 12, will you remember your sin no more? Okay, just go into Revelation chapter 14. Um, now, <clears throat> here is an example of the church being judged. Okay, you tell me after reading that if you think that the church has not been dealt with and judged. Listen to what it says. Revelation chapter 14, verse, starting at verse 3. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts. And, and before the elders, and no man could learn the song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. The Bible talks about that they, they've learned the song, and there's 144,000. I'm going to put something in your mind. The one that, re, that were redeemed, the one that learned the song, were 144,000. Is that 
all the Christians that that's going to be honored. I, I, I'm not talking about the dead. Is that all the Christian that's going to be honored at the time of Christ when we are living in a time that there's over 7 billion people on the face of the earth? And more? I mean, 10? I don't know. But here is 144,000. And what? This is the bride here. This is the bride. And Jesus said in my, he says, when I come back, look what Jesus said. Straight is the gate, the gate and narrows the, narrows the way, and few will there be that finds it. I know the, the, the televangelist tells you the great harvest is, is now. The great harvest is not now. That's another lie. I'll show you the great harvest in the second resurrection. I'll show you a harvest that is a harvest. Today, it's for the bride of Christ only. The one that's going to rule over the harvest. The, if you're faithful in small things, I will, you make, you make, uh, I will make you ruler over nation. Not up there, here on earth. Blessed is he that hungers and, uh, and thirsts after righteousness, for he shall be, be filled. Blessed is he if you, you will inherit the earth. Not heaven. You will inherit the earth. If you're faithful over a small thing, I'll make you rulers over big things. Here on earth. Okay? <clears throat> now, so, listen. There were a hundred, listen what it says about those 144,000. And I'm telling you what I understand. And I'm telling you what I see. You see? That's what I'm telling you. Watch. And they sang, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the beast and before the elders. And no man could learn the song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from heaven, no, the earth. And these are they which were not defiled with women. What does that mean? And you know why they're not defiled? Because they're virgin. Well, wait a minute. Are we becoming here uh, some Muslim? That if we put a pipe bomb around us, that we, we're going to get our 120 uh, virgin in heaven? You can't find one, never mind a hundred of them. The Bible says, those ones have not defiled themselves. They are virgin. Spiritually speaking, God bought you. I mean, listen, men, men doesn't want to run around on their wife, so I think. And women don't want to run around on their husbands. Okay? And if they do, one of them is really offended, insulted, and they cry for years. Yet we cheat, we flirt, we do all kinds of things on God and think nothing of it. They're whipping themselves and carrying cross when he did it for us. <clears throat> women represent the church. There's two women in the Bible. The bride of Christ and the harlot church. And if you're not in the bride, you're in the harlot church. And if you claim to be a Christian and you're fooling around with the harlot church, you're not a virgin. And God wants you to stay a virgin. Is that clear? Spiritually, God wants you to stay a virgin. Don't play in Bethel. Don't go play. That's why he says, come out from among her, my people, and be not partakers of her sin, that you receive none of her plague. For her sin has reached unto heaven, and God will remember her iniquity. Come out of that. Well, I, I'm your husband that you're going to be marrying to. Are you flirting with the world? What are you doing? That's, he says, they are virgin. Okay. And these are they which were not defiled with churches. They're not playing games. Stick with what you believe. Not what I believe. Stick with what you see. Stick with what you believe. And don't become defiled with all kinds of garbage. Get that junk out of your head. These are they which follow the Lamb. People wonder why their prayers are not answered. 
They're not following the Lamb. They don't obey God. If you want to God to use you, obey Him and see the salvation of the Lord. I see great things in my life because I try to obey God to the fullest. Not what men tell me. They, they all like me. So, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgin. See what I'm saying? Trying to. So this cannot be in the flesh. The bride of Christ, they are virgin. The bride of Christ will be virgin. You'll be married, you'll be have 10 kids, or, but you will be a virgin. You will, to God, you have been faithful, you did not cheat on him. Where, uh, listen, listen. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgin. These are they which followed the Lamb wherever he went. Obeyed the Lamb in everything. This is my purpose here on earth. To obey God and do all things that would be pleasing to him. This is what my mission is. This is what my vocation is. Is to really please God. And by helping you and putting everything out, I, am, I want to please God. That's why I'm doing this. Otherwise, I could go kick some sand by the beach of Waikiki, I'm telling you. With my sweet daughter and bring Joseph with me. <clears throat> Listen, these were redeemed by what? By the precious blood of the Lamb. That's why you don't need to whip to yourself. That's why He provided it for you. Just believe that. If you believe that, you will not with yourself. If you believe that, you will not carry a cross that he left 2,000 years ago. So sad, man. They were redeemed from among men. Being, being the first fruit. Watch that. Being the first fruit unto God. They're the first fruit. They're the first resurrection. They're the first one that's going to come out of the ground. That's the kind, that's who's going to make it. Not a bunch of dead beat that say I'm a Christian, but don't live the life. The ones that followed the lamb wherever he went. Those are they that's going to stand before him and they have no guile in their mouth. Look at the next verse, what it says. For in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without faults. Imagine what I just finished telling you about the judgment. The bride is not going to be judged because why would it be judged when it's not no false? This is making sense. Those messages that are going to come out of this place in the next three times, and then I'm going to take a year break. Ed. I'm not right. I don't, I'm not usually good at that. But here, look. And in their mouth was found no God, and they are without fault before God. Wow. God looks at you and he sees his precious blood. He sees what he's done for you. He's seen that you are not living in the flesh, but you're living in the spirit. He sees his perfect word works in you. That's why he says you are justified by faith. You as a person, are, you're not perfect. But because I justified you, you are going to stand before me and you will be faith. You will be without fault. Abraham was a man that did all kinds of things right. Your father here, your forefather, he did all kinds of things wrong. He made his wife lie. He made his wife go to bed with him, trying to make her go to bed with another man. And the angel showed the king that that, that, that was not right. That one, the Bible says, he is, is righteousness. He became a righteous man because of his faith. And what will make you righteous and without fault, standing before God, it's your faith in Him. Oh, brethren, if you can only open your understanding, open your mind to those truths. You will stand without fault, not because you're good, but because of His faithfulness, because of His righteousness, because of who He is. Praise the Lord forevermore. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. The wicked will be judged because the, the, the wicked will be judged because they have done wrong. Now I'm coming to the resurrection now. Finally. First Corinthians chapter 15. Again, the resurrection uh, passage. 
It's talking about the resurrection. But he's telling us, listen, again, another proof that when you die, you're not. The world believes that when you die, you're resurrected right away. Let's see, what the, let's see if that's what the Bible says. Wow, what a wonderful thing when we're able to depend on the word of God for, for the truth. Me, I couldn't read, I couldn't read, I couldn't write, I couldn't speak English, I couldn't do nothing. But I said, Lord, you open my understanding what it says, and I'm going to preach it. And look how, look how simple it is. Here, I'm going to knock that doctrine right off the bench. Okay, here it is. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. Did you see that? He became the first one. This is the passage of the resurrection. And he says, I'm the first one to resurrect from the dead. Not Enoch, not Abraham, not David, not none of them. Oh, oh, he resurrected Lazarus from the dead to finish his normal life on earth in the flesh. Did you hear that? He went to a funeral procession one day, and people were going to caring and boo-hoo-hoo. He went and he opened the coffin and he grabbed the person and came out of there. To finish their life in the flesh. And when I talk about the second resurrection, I will show you what will happen to people when they're resurrected in at the second resurrection. So, some people and were resurrected because after he was, the Bible said, see, Lazarus didn't go to heaven because the Bible said that Jesus Christ is the first one to resurrect. We need to believe that. Okay. Listen, not only that verse, now I'm going to go on proving that Jesus Christ is the first one. Look. Okay. But now is Christ risen from the dead and it become the first fruit of them that sleep. For since by Adam came death, by, by, no. For since by man came death, by man came the resurrection of the dead. You all understand that. For in Adam all died, even in Christ shall all be made alive. Because of Christ, because of Christ, all will be made alive. In the first resurrection, and there's some that will not make it. But in the second resurrection also. Okay, watch. But, look what he says. But things are in order here. Okay, verse 23. He says, for uh, 22, for in Adam all, all die, even in Christ will all be made alive. But, 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 but every man in his own order. You see, every man's going to have, have resurrect from in his own order. The first resurrection, the second resurrection, and the third one. Everyone will resurrect in their own order. You know what that means? Not at the same time. Okay. Christ, the first one. That's one resurrection. And these that are Christ at his coming. There we go. This has got nothing to do with the wicked. Now, here is the first resurrection. Okay. I don't even need a Bible there. Anyway, I, I don't. I, I quote better than I read. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I want you to notice the wicked are not in there. They're not going to be part of the first resurrection. People always quote a funeral from 15 to 18 but fail to start and see in the subject and the object of what it's talking about. Don't jump at verse 15, let's start at verse 13. And it starts by saying, I don't want you to be ignorant brethren, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. That's what I'm quoting. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant brethren concerning them that are asleep. The one, I don't want you to be ignorant about the dead. Where are they? Took a ride with a man and he was concerned where his dad was. He was told he was in hell and okay, he's not happy about that. 
I said, your dad is not in hell because the, re- the judgment has not taken place. The resurrection has not even taken place. So how can he be in hell? You're dead until you're dead until you resurrect. So he says, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning them that are asleep. If we believe that Jesus Christ died, so who is he talking to? Believers. If we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, so will Christ bring them with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Paul says, I want to tell you something, not my word, the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain until the comings of the Lord will not prevent them which are saved. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. How is it going to happen? The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout and with the trump of God. And the book of Revelation talks about the trump of God, the first trump, the second trump, up to the seventh trump. The last, this is the last trump. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a trump, with a sound. And the dead in Christ, no wicked there. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain as Christians will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Do you see the wicked are not there? That's a resurrection that there's no wicked there? Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for opening your revelation, opening the book to us. I said last week, Luke 20, Luke 24, 45. Jesus had to open their understanding that they would understand the scriptures. Luke 24, 32, and the scriptures were opened to them. And some of you, I prayed for you, and the scriptures have been opened since then. All of you, all of you, the scriptures, before you can understand it. That's what the Lord has called me for. And you know what? I really believe that. And I can never get over it from where I come from. And what God has done for this man here is a miracle upon miracle. I, I can never get used to it. If the novelty, see, I got it, getting better. The novelty never wears off. See? Novelty, novelty. I repeated that word. I thought it was a good word to use. Novelty. I, re- I, I repeated it. And, uh, now, now it's welded. You see? When I want to know where a verse is, I go to the computer and then I listen to what he tells me. Now, okay. okay. Now, <clears throat> so he tells us in the first resurrection what is going to take place. Okay? Now, your favorite verse. Are you ready for it? Revelation chapter 20, 4, 5, and 6. I'm going to sing that one until we're finished. Because I really want you to understand that verse. You you still think we're that dumb? Unless God reveals his word to you, you don't understand it. That's why people go to church all their life and don't know anything about this. The scriptures were never opened to them. Once you're born again and God does a healing in your head, the scriptures will be open to you. Only people that don't know God, they've never been born again, that the scriptures are not open to them. But people that claim to be Christian, that's why I've asked people, what's the problem? I met a guy from Texas, yak, 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 with a cowboy, yak, yak, yak. You should have heard this guy. The, 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 the accent that he had. And I went up to him because somehow I, he says he believes a Christian or whatever. I said, you know, and I was in Hawaii with my woman, my sweetheart. And I said to him, I said, you know, we got, the Christian had a problem in Canada. I said, I thought I was shooting at the duck and he didn't throw here because it's all over the, the world the same way. People don't know the Bible. You think this is only here? No. It's all over like that. It doesn't matter where you go. I said, in Canada, people don't know the Bible. Is it like that in Texas? He doesn't want to strike a conversation. He doesn't need me much to get anything going. I don't have to strike many maps. I get them going real quick. When they are, I said, people have been born again for 20 years, yet they don't seem to know. 
They don't seem to know. It's because the scriptures are not open to them. And if you're here or you're going to be listening on this, of this message and you, you've been born again for a long time but you cannot document what you believe, ask God to forgive you for the way you've lived. Start with that. Ask him, go back and do your first works over again. Ask for forgiveness and then say, and put your darn pride aside and say, Lord, I'm wretched, I'm naked, and I don't have it. But in you, there's life. In John chapter 1, he says, in him there's life, and he was able to give life unto him. So, Lord, would you give me life and open my understanding that I would understand the scriptures? Praise the Lord for the Lord. <clears throat> Okay, now I said about Revelation. Yeah, are you all there? Okay. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, 5, and 6. Now, I I'm asking God to open your understanding here. Because I want to show you it looks like there's a contradiction in here, but there's none. There's no contradiction in there. Now, verse 4. Listen. And I saw throne. Okay. This is talking only, only about the first resurrection. It talks about the first resurrection and it'll talk a little bit about the second resurrection. But it's talking, what I'm going to read in that, this chapter here is the first resurrection. Watch. And I saw throne and they that sat on them. And judgment was given unto them. They had received judgment already. Judgment was given unto them. This is the bride. And I saw the souls that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. I saw in, I saw in the spirit the souls that the people, souls are not something inside of you that has bacon and eggs every morning. The soul is you. The soul in this place is talking about you. I saw the people because otherwise the soul would have a head. And you can cut it off. Only the body you can do that thing. Not something else. That spirit. How can you cut the head of the spirit? Okay, right, here we go again. And I saw throne. And they that sat on them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. From the time of Christ. Some were beheaded. And until Christ comes back. And here he seen what he saw just before the comings of the Lord. He says, I saw throne, and judgment was given, and I saw them that were beheaded for the gospel. I'll tell you what, some people say we're going to fly away and nothing's going to happen. Let me tell you something. That's not biblical to begin with. But what I want to say to you is if I have, I, I don't want nothing to happen to me. Jesus didn't want nothing to happen in the, in the garden of Gethsemane, and that's why he was sweating, sweats of blood. And he asked the Father, can this thing pass away from me? Because he was in the flesh, he was going through a hard time, who wants to die? But the Spirit of God in you should be strong enough to overcome all things. Okay, now, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Why were they beheaded? They were not fly by night. Because they witnessed. Is that why you, some of you keep your mouth shut and don't see anything? When you should be witnessing, the reason they were they had them their head cut off because they were witness. They stood for what they believed, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for for the witness of Jesus Christ and for the word of God. Those people give their life for Jesus Christ and the word of God, not for their friend and who hope, uh, hoping they don't offend them. And when they, they, they come and talk to them, they buckle down and they have their legs up in the air. Okay, listen. Listen. And I saw throne and they that sat upon them and judgment was given. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast. There's an antichrist coming. And the ones that say, well, that was in the time of the apostle. It's talking about the coming. We're talking about the comings of the Lord. Before the comings of the Lord, there's going to be an antichrist who's going to show himself that he is God. God says, Paul says, remember, I warned you of that. Be not deceived. 
I want to talk to you, he says, about the comings of the Lord and us gathering together unto him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled by spirit or the letter from us. For the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you for any means. For that day shall not come except there comes a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. Christ is not coming back until the man of sin is revealed. Okay, back on track. We shall not worship the beast. Not only worship, get that junk out of your their mind, whipping yourself, carrying cross, doing the works of the flesh. Get that stuff out of your head. Because if you're doing that, that kind of stuff, which is pagan stuff, you will taste of the wrath of God. This is part of worshiping the image of the beast. Neither is image, neither receive their mark upon, upon their forehead or in their hand. And they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Wait a minute. Get verse 5 out of your mind here. I'm on verse 4. And here he's talking about the bride. And he's talking about what they went through and what they stood for. And they were, someone had to be beheaded. And they live with Christ. And reign with Christ for 1,000 years. That's the bride of Christ. Do you see that? Never mind the next verse. Okay, now that you got that, at that place in Mark, the first resurrection. Okay. Now, and we do that all the time, what's the big deal? Now, he gets off track and he makes a statement and it's not a follow-up. And because the reason it's not a follow-up, it would contradict verse 4. He just backs off and makes a statement and gets back on track. That's all that that happened there. Watch, verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not until the thousand years is finished. Stop. That contradicts verse 4. Because they rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. And the next verse it says, they stay in the ground until the thousand years. Do you see the contradiction? So now, now, so let me put it this way. Okay, let me put it the way it is. Okay? Fast. And I saw throne and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ and for the word of God, which did not worship the beast, neither his image, neither received their mark on their forehead. And they rule and reign with Christ for 1,000 years. Oh, and by the way, the rest of the dead, when this will happen, when Christ will come back, there's millions of people in the ground. They're all not saved, but some will have a chance. Okay? Some won't. But some will. And the rest, he's just making a sin. And the rest of the dead will not rise until the thousand years is over. So that's going to be another resurrection then. So in the millennium, there's going to, and now I don't have time to prove it today because my time is at hand. But I will show to you that in the millennium, rain, people, like what happened to my grandma? My grandfather, my grandmother gave me a cookie, but she was a nice person. But she was not born again like I am. Is she in hell? I know the people will tell you she's in hell and burning. But the Bible doesn't say that. She never had a chance and God's going to give her a chance. And I'm going to show you verse that says that people in this world. God says, you know what? Get rid of that person. That she'll have a chance to get saved in the day of the Lord. I'm not preaching a second chance. I'm just preaching... People that never had a chance. There's people that never heard the truth. Never had a chance. Will they have a chance? You betcha. So you cannot pass judgment because I got a hundred more verses, but I can't do it today. So it will continue next week. Now watch. But the rest of the dead, now he's talking about another resurrection here. Will not happen until the end of the thousand years. But now in verse 6, he goes back to... What he was talking about. So blessed is he that has part in the first resurrection. Because there's no judgment on the second one and there's no death. Blessed is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death. I just want to see this, the ones that maybe never heard this before. What's the second death? In the book of Matthew. Fear not him that can destroy the body, but fear him that can destroy it. Not now, destroy means fini, fini, that's it. Fear 
him that can destroy both soul and body in the hell. So, at the last one, at the last, at the last judgment, some will be cast into the lake of fire, not to burn like a piece of bacon or for eternity, when they never even have a, a choice to be born again or be alive to begin with. They'll be cast into the lake of fire, and that is the second death. Not the second life, the second death. The wages of sin is not eternal life in hell. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Have we been lied to or what? Okay. Well, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no part. But he shall be a priest of God and of Christ. And shall reign with Christ a thousand years. Do you see? This is all the first resurrection, except he gets off the course a little bit, and he mentions about the second resurrection. That's all that is. And why, after, can you imagine after God, you reign, you reign with Christ for a thousand years, because the great white throne judgment, that's the last thing that's going to take place. Do you see? They'll rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years, but now he's going to take, and they will be spirit. The bride of Christ is going to be spirit. You'll be changed in the the bride of Christ will be changed. Not the rest. The rest, St. Lord, will still be there. Rebecca, the, the tree you planted will hopefully will be there. Praise the Lord. Okay. 